Finance Committee for February 11th to order. Uh, first order of business is the minutes. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, is there any corrections? Paul. Uh, under the transfer about halfway down the page, it says to hire an IP consultant. I think that's IT consultant. The oh. The first sentence. Okay, IT. Oh, thank you. Okay, is there any other corrections on the minutes? Okay, made, motion's been made and uh, seconded to accept the minutes as corrected. For all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Minutes are done. Now, I just uh, remind you again about the uh, conflict of interest certificates. Uh, you know, once, you, once you've taken the uh, course uh, that you got uh, all the information from Gloria's emails uh, earlier, I guess it was in January, um, please remember to take it. Leave some time. This is not like that piece of cake we had two years ago. Uh, it, it was very frustrating, I found, because you all of a sudden they gave you the information, you took the thing, you answered it, <coughs> you thought you had it right, and they said, no, it's incorrect because of this exemption. So it's like the problem has been all the exemptions that have accumulated over a period of time. So it, it'll take a little time, or maybe I'm just getting slow in my old age. So let me have them. Uh, as soon as you get them, I think it's early April, like April 5th, you're supposed to have these in. Um, uh, to me, and then I'll take them nice and put them in a, my file cabinet, and, and somebody asks they're there. Um, okay. Uh, did anybody not get a finance committee handbook? Yeah, this is new this fall. Anybody else? Could you send that over? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Um, Gloria, did everybody get this? The uh, yes. hearing schedule? Okay. Now, uh, we've lost two days already because of the snow, and I have a feeling that uh, next Monday is going to get canceled anyway. I would usually not have it because it's a holiday. Um, but I was thinking of it, but now we're going to get more snow. Um, so I want to keep the idea open of, of taking one morning in, in, uh, on a Saturday in March. So if, uh, Alan, could you put out to the committee uh, three days, March 4th, March 11th, Wait a minute. Yeah. That's wrong times. Uh, March 7th, <coughs> March 14th, and March 28th. He's going to doodle you all and go online and tell them what days you can make. I'm thinking of like starting at 8 o'clock and finishing up at 1 or 2. And, you know, just one of those days if we need it. We might not need it. But if you could let Alan know, I'll get back to you with a date that if you could save. And then if we need to, we can do that. Because um, I'd hate to go back and break the Mary Ronan rule of, you know, going to 11 o'clock every night. Uh, uh, that is always a drag um, for that. Uh, okay, everybody has the warrant. We'll, we'll deal with that later. <coughs> okay, retirement articles. Uh, so this would be in your warrant articles 37, 38, and 39. Article 37, Appropriation Pension Adjustment for Former 25-Year uh, Accidental Disability <coughs> Employees. This is the one we do every year. We've got a couple of new people. Uh, this is Mr. Greco from the uh, Retirement Board. If you could give a brief summary of what this article is. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, my name is Rich Greco. I'm the Retirement Administrator for the Town of Arlington. Um, I'm here representing the board. And we've put three articles forward. First one is Article 37, which is the Appropriation Pension Adjustment for Former 25-Year Accidental Disability Employees and Regular. So what this is, is if you serve the town for 25 years and you retire, 
with this passage each year, we're able to monitor the retirees to make sure they don't <coughs> fall below 50% of what the job they left is paying. So if you think retirees only get 3% of 15,000 is their maximum raise, and the regular employees get 2 or 3% or whatever, the gap grows <coughs> over longevity. And that's what this is designed to do, is to try to keep the person at an income that is fair and keeps up with inflation. There's no money theoretically involved in this because we vote it every year, and then it's worked into the actuarial study. So we don't ask for any additional funds. Um, so in other words, I, I worked four years at the state. If I retire with 25 years and I have 21 years in Arlington, I am not eligible because I did not put in 25 years with the town. You have to put in 25 years with the town. So in order for me to be eligible for this benefit, I would have to work 29 years for in the state, 25 here. Um, if you are an accidental disability, you are eligible right away because you were hurt on the job, you can't perform your essential duties to no fault of your own, you came to work that day and you got hurt, so 25 year is, is waived. So 90A is accidental, 90C is a person that has a straight pension, 90D is an ordinary disability, which is if you put in 25 years and let's say you get cancer or something outside of work, you're not a police or fire, you are eligible. And 90E just gives us the ability of if the job is eliminated, let's say at one time DPW had a street sweep that literally swept the streets, and that person retired, they didn't fill it. Well, we'd match it up with the job code that that was, like an entry-level DPW person, and that gives us that ability to, to match that up of what the job classification was. Is there any questions? Okay. Um, Especially for the new people, you see there's a date there in the middle, May 1, 2010. Um, John Billifer, the chairman of the board, and I were sitting having coffee in my kitchen and going through a lot of this, and we just came to the sort of realization that what this is designed to do is prevent people from falling below the 50% level. But what it actually could do is people could actually, this could actually bump people up to the 50% level. So if you're here for 25 years and you start when you're 20 and you retired, you, you would only be eligible for a 25% <coughs> pension. And without that date in there, this would bump you from the 25 to the 50, and that was certainly not the intent of the retirement board uh, on that. So what we did back then is put in a date, anybody after May 1, 2010, uh, who retires is not eligible for this pro this provision unless they were eligible for at least 50% at that time they retired. So it was there just to prevent a uh, somebody taking advantage of this uh, of this article um, on that. So anyway, that's why the date's there. Do you have any sense of how many uh, you know how how many people or how mu how much you have to put into this each year? I know it gets yeah. put in the uh, accrued, but no, no, that's, that's that's a good question. It's um, there's probably <coughs> about the six hundred twenty twenty or so retirees and survivors, okay, in the system that we pay. Um, I would say roughly two hundred of the retirees are probably twenty five year people, two hundred to two hundred twenty five people, um, probably sixty people last year got bumped up. And it was probably an increase to the overall payroll somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars total. Total for the for the pay you know for our payroll to go up. Um, you know, depending on the raises, you get a one percent raise, that's less. You get a three percent raise, it's more because the employee's going up higher in the fifty percent. Just so you know, too, and the cost it, it, it keeps this down a little bit too is the cola is paid first. So first we give the person the COLA. If the COLA brings them above 50%, then obviously they don't get this additional benefit. If the COLA doesn't bring them up to the 50%, then the extra benefit cuts in. And the COLA, all COLAs in the Commonwealth and all the actuaries that do it, have the COLA built in. So that cost is already there. So this is just the additional after the COLA. So that's another reason, you know, and stuff as far as the cost goes um, and stuff. 
Okay, are there any are there any questions on this article? Okay, let's go on to Article 38, Appropriation Post Other uh, Post uh, Employment Benefits OPEB. Okay, so the OPEB is other post employment benefits and basically your health insurance. Um, the idea was set up um, through GASB to start funding the health insurance, very similar to the way the retirement boards were in 1988 made to be funded. Um, what goes on though with the OPEB is you're not required to have the funding schedule the same way. So this funding schedule, we get an appropriation and start funding it, which helps our bond ratings and so forth because we are addressing it. But the amount that is that we're giving is much is is going to be this this uh, year is going to be around a little over six hundred sixty thousand dollars. If we were following the funding schedule, it would be ten million dollars. So um, unless the town's playing Powerball. I don't think we're going to see that $10 million and stuff to come in anytime soon. So um, this is a way to fund it. It keeps the GASB happy that there is something being addressed with it. We're ahead of a lot of communities, many, many communities, by the fact that just we're addressing it. Um, right now, there's about $8.2 million as of December 31st in um, the, the OPEP fund. Um, we have about, uh, let's see here, we're going to get $413,000 based on the difference of the non-contrib budget, uh, the last four non-contribs, and $500,000. And then there's a $155,000 figure that comes into it also because when uh, retirees insurance went up, there was a deal made that some of that increase would come back into the OPEB, come back in to help the benefit that they're paying for. So our article would call for five hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars. Carol and I have been going talking back and forth here. It looks like the town is gonna to kick in an additional ninety two thousand eight hundred and make the total appropriation six hundred and sixty thousand six hundred and seventy seven dollars. So can I have so if you're if you have your um your budget with you and you turn to page two thirty four, you can see the old numbers and I'm gonna hand out a new one. Okay, this is on the uh, non-contrib? The whole this is OPEB. The o money. This is the whole OPEB. So you can pass those around. <clears throat> Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, Paul? Just because I've forgotten. Uh, who is managing the investments for this fund? So we have a consultant named Makita Investments out of Westwood, and they've invested it into the... Um, sure I get the name right here, is basically the Vanguard Fund. It's, it's similar to a pooled fund. We've got some exposure in U.S. equities. Um, actually, I can tell you exactly one sec here. Were you asking what board or well, official? No, I mean, he's answering my question. Okay. So yes. it's, it's, it, it, it didn't, it's not with the pensions being uh, managed by... Um, not by the state, by PRIM, no. Uh, the, as you know, PRIM is the Pension Reserve Administration of Management. That's the board. And the fund is called the PRIT fund. People get confused because they're so close. But it's got us in domestic equities, uh, developed markets, international tips, high yield, and short term. Um, so it's, it's spread out in a broad base. Um, unfortunately, the return last year on that was only about 3.6 um, as far as that went. Uh, the three-year average, though, is 10.2% on it. So... Uh, we shoot similar to the retirement uh, fund of a 7.5% uh, discount. What, what's the name of that again, Rich? The Harvard, uh, I'm sorry, Harvard. <laughs> That's my health insurance, sorry. Uh, the Vanguard Fund. Just, just the Vanguard Fund? Yeah. Another name to it? Uh, let me just double check if there's an official name for it. Is all the money in that one fund? Yes, it is. Okay, so it's a balanced fund. Yes, it is. It's be, oh, as they call it, pool fund. You know, it's pool, the money's pulled together. It is this uh, referred to, and this is the Vanguard fund. If um, okay. something else is, comes up, I'll, I'll email it to you guys and stuff. But that's what we refer to it, and it's referred to in the report. Thank you. Okay, is there any other questions? Jane? <coughs> um, I have a few questions. I think I usually ask it is, so they're not <laughs> I was getting worried. You hadn't said anything, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll start in reverse order because Paul had the um, so 
it was going at the third one that was going away. If I remember, we have the money with the, um, with the retirement board because if we had it with the treasurer, he legally doesn't have the same options of investing because he has all sorts of prudent investment standards, not to say that you're not prudent investing, but that you have a lot more. It was also Gasby um, in the state, when this came out, the state felt that the retirement boards were used to being in the larger funds and so forth and the expertise on that. So that's why all the... Um, Retirement boards oversee any OPEP funds in the community. Okay, so that's still the same, right? Um, in terms of, so this is sort of the big one, right? Um, the, the pension fund has a legal funding date by state law, right? Mm -hmm. this sort of, yeah. I was say gun to our head, but we have this requirement that we have to yep. fund by a certain date, and if we sure. don't, the state will force us. Yep. to do it. Now, at yeah. one point it was 2035. I remember in 08 they pushed it. It's, it's 2040 now. Right. It is 2040 yeah. now. Yeah, originally yeah. when it started in 1988, they did it for uh, 2028, and then 2008 happened, and it became unrealistic, and it went to 35 and then to 40, so it's 2040 now. We're scheduled on the pension fund to be uh, funded in 2032. Yeah, it was 2018 when it was 37. budget to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, in, in, on the OPEP side, are we we haven't heard any whispering from the state. I would hope not of legally mandating any type of no, they don't OPEP fund. They're still just sort of silent as could kind be. of going along. You'd be surprised how many communities. I mean, I know Wellesley, Needham, along with us, and a few other places that are funding it, but most of them aren't, haven't addressed it. Uh, Brookline addressed it, but not of the consistency that Arlington has. Even though they may have put in more at times. They haven't consistently done it like we have, which my understanding with the treasurer helps with the bond and stuff and the discount rate that we use when we're looking at the unfunded liability because we are addressing it. Well, that was going to be my third question, right? Because we're, so we're effectively... Set Belmont High Education. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, I, we have, look, we're kind of like the best, I mean, the best way, we're sort of at the, the best of the worst, mm -hmm. I guess you would say, right? Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, I, I would say you probably don't know, I can talk to the treasurer as well, but... From your perspective, they're not we're not getting any huge downward pressure from the rating agencies on this. Yeah, we're all just kind of in the same boat together. No, and I think well, I think it's we're a little ahead of the curve because we are addressing it. That's my understanding. Uh, third person, don't quote. You know what I mean? But that's that's my understanding. Is it's because if you weren't using it, you'd have to use a lower discount rate, which would make your unfunded liability larger and and all that. So when we're addressing it, we get to use like a four point four percent. And you know, if we were using 7.5, it would be the arc would go down and stuff. Right now, like I said, if the arc, um, I think, would be like 16 million dollars right now if we were to fund it and stuff in the uh, report. Okay. So I guess my, my last question is, um, I mean, what are your when you take the pension plan and the OPEP and the sort of funding strategy that we have right now? I mean, what are your sort of general thoughts on it? You know, and you know. Cause to me, and I sort of I think I just laid out my own opinion right there, which is we have a legal funding requirement on the pension side, so you yeah. never want to ever decelerate the pedal on that one. Right. You know, if you can, exactly. To me, if you can pull in the years yep. to 2020, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Because there's going to be another 208. Right. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and stuff. And so out. if you went to 2040, you're leaving yourself no wiggle room. That's, that's just not prudent to do. It's not fiscally responsible, in my opinion. It, no, exactly. So, I mean, from, from my perspective, I think we have, as a committee, we've always said we should. We, we, you, you love to try to start funding both and mess around funding schedules and stuff yeah. like that, but from from the, the fact that there's a legal requirement on one of them kind of makes it prohibitive. At least my our thoughts always been. Do you have any sort of different thoughts? On yeah. That? Well, before 2008, John and I had discussed, and maybe with, you know, maybe you, <coughs> you've been here a while, one of the familiar faces on here, because I've been doing this for 14 years. So. Um, we talked about you know when we were 65 percent funded before the crash. You know, we were like, oh, maybe we could slow this down a little bit and take some of that money, so still appropriate $10 million, but maybe instead of putting it on the pension, maybe eight to uh, pensions and $2 million to OPEB and start cranking that up a little bit. But the world changed on that year, you know, and stuff. And now we got to scramble just to get, because we're down to 49% funded on the retirement side. We're still not, I know all these local people liked Pritt. But we're still not at the 140 million we were at the crash. We ended at about 134 million last year, so you know we still got work to do. And we were, after the override, getting a six percent increase on the appropriation. We just negotiated that in December to 5.5. 5. 
um, increasing, you know, down the road and stuff. So, yeah, it'd be tough to take away from the pension, you know, and stuff because we are legally mandated. OPEP, I guess it's once it starts making enough money, could you start drawing on it? I, you know what I mean? But when is that date? I mean, that's dangerous, you know, and stuff. Is, there's no date to say when it should be funded by, and there's no date when you start pulling the assets out. So um, it's just a slow run. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, and my, my last thing is more of a comment, because I, I did notice in our five-year plan this year that the rate of increase per year of the um, <coughs> of the pension plan is going down. I think it used to be at 6% a year, it's going to be at 5 and a half. Five and a half, yeah. Um, so I would like to thank you and the retirement board for your continued cooperation with the um, larger town. We're all in this together. We're all in this together, and, and that's the thing. I mean, it's, you're not going to, you know, take from somewhere and, and stuff. We want to work with it, but, you know, we do got to catch up because, well, you know. Right, but, but, you know, what I would say is you know, we're all in this together, but mm -hmm. the state still gives you guys legal autonomy to not be in this together. So I do think it's a, well, thank I, you. I, yes, I am sir. appreciative of, you know, yeah. the, the continued support of the retirement board to be able to look past you know, their own desire on funding and realize that there's a larger yeah. town enterprise and services that would have to be cut and work with everyone. No, I, 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 no, it's, you know, and it'd be kind of hypocritical because the people we'd be cutting are all our members. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it's kind of, except for teachers. I Just uh, the new people, the retirement board does not have the teachers. We have everybody else. I have school employees, but I don't have teachers. So those are the, that's what makes up the, the system. Okay. Are there any other questions on the OPEC? Which yes. discount rate do you use? Uh, seven and a half percent. And the, I thought I heard you say a ten million dollar figure. Right. Well, this year's appropriation is going to be roughly ten million dollars, but it's not all from the town. The housing authority puts a piece in, and the town puts a piece of it in. The majority is the town. Okay, probably about ninety-seven percent of it, um, and a few percent from the housing authority because the housing authority employees are part of us. Okay, so they have to pay an appropriation also towards it. Um, so it's up to it's ten million dollars roughly this year when you get to that part of your budget. That um, it'll probably be nine something from the town, nine point eight, nine point seven, something like that. Okay. And then you use the figure of sixteen million. Oh, uh, sixteen million is on the OPEP. I'm sorry. So to, uh, to confuse you, the ten million is the uh, pension plan. Gotcha. Okay, which the funding uh, we have a funding schedule going out to two thousand and thirty two. The OPEP is where Dean was talking about that has no real mandate. But if we were following a mandate and a funding schedule to get it funded within 30 years, like the pension system, we would have to put in $16 million a year. Assuming the 7.5%. Assuming the 7.5%. <coughs> okay, is there any other questions on the OPEB fund? Same thing. That's a seven and a half. If that's four point four, that's where we are. It's a sixteen million. Yeah, okay. four point four. Uh, and the last article is uh, Article Thirty Nine, uh, acceptance of legislation increase of survivor benefits. So I'm going to make this real easy for you. We're going to have to withdraw this article at this time because of everything going on with OPEB and stuff. The actuary was not able to give us numbers. I'll give you a brief one on it because it's going to come back next year. Um, members that retired on an accidental disability before 1996 were not allowed to pick a continuing benefit for their spouse. They get what's <coughs> called, and I apologize for the women in the room, the system was set up in 1939, a widow's benefit. I right? could be a widower, but it's called a widow's benefit. Um, and right now, those members um, are able to get $9,000 a year, okay? Um, the legislator moved it up to 9000 We voted it in 2011 from six dollars to $9,000. Legislature came back and said, you know, there's people that are paid to stay at home that get $1,000 a month for different reasons within the Commonwealth. It's a, it's a small universe because it can't add to it, number one. Number two, it only goes to the spouse. It doesn't go to kids or families. It only goes to a spouse. So just so you know what we're looking at, there's about 37 members um, that would be eligible still for this, which is down from 49 when we talked about it a couple of years ago. Um, four of them are not married, so they, they have nobody to give the benefit to. And 13 of them are on a presumption, which means they were police of fire and they either had a heart condition or a cancer. And if they die of what they went out on, they get a different benefit. So they would even be taken out of this pool of money. So the number we're doing is a worst case scenario and it could go somewhere else. Um, 
So we don't have the figures for that, so we agreed that we would hold off for a year because the legislation allows us to adopt it at any time. So we'll probably come back with more stronger figures and stuff for you. Um, the concern is the jump last year from six, to, uh, four years ago from six to nine, people had gotten COLA, so it wasn't a full $3,000 jump to put on the unfunded liability. Where it hasn't been that many years right now, all of the people will be jumping to nine, from nine to 12, and it could be much more expensive benefit. So. Okay, since so uh, it's going to be withdrawn, we'll yeah. vote no action on it. Then yeah. you could give us a more full explanation next year. Next year, I'll have no. In which case, there yet. could be fewer members. Unfortunately, yeah, that's part of the field I work in. Um, the numbers, <laughs> the numbers go down uh, and stuff. Um, but is there any other? You know, we always want to be accessible. Is there any other questions regarding retirement or OPEB I can answer while we're here? Okay. Any okay. other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate thank you the time. Me. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right. Okay. Uh, Human Rights Fund article. Uh, article 33, Appropriation Human Rights Fund Executive Director. So, Stephen, you want to take a seat up here? Sure. Okay, so if you could uh, give us how much you think um, this will be for and why. Okay, so it's um, five years ago was the first time I came in front of you guys. It was for um, to snow. remove snow <laughs> from the sidewalks on Mass Ave. <laughs> it was a $14,000 a year appropriation according to the town of Lexington, Lexington, Winchester, some of all Cambridge, they all do it. And here we are five years later, I wish you guys had supported it. But that said, you know, um, I'm here tonight about the Human Rights Commission. And um, I don't really have a big presentation. I find that, you know, it doesn't really work anyhow. Um, so what I've done is uh, I sent to Gloria just sort of a, a, a threat. Um, and what it starts off is I ask, um, for the contact information of the executive <laughs> director of the Human Rights Commission. And the response back um, was from Christine Carney, who is the um, chair of the Human Rights Commission. And she says to me that um, there hasn't been an executive director for 10 years. And so she fulfills the role, I guess. But then I look at the bylaw, and some of you old timers, or pardon me, some of you uh, well experienced people <laughs> probably know that in 1993, town meeting created the Human Rights Commission. And so some of you probably were around for that. And in 1993, and if you look at the bylaw, it's very clear. It says there shall be an executive director. And why that matters is because that's the person you make complaints to. You don't make complaints to some appointed political body. Yeah, and that executive director will be a town employee who reports to the town manager. And so it's important that there's an executive director for the Human Rights Commission. And it's become very important. Personally, I care because I had a complaint and there's no one to make a complaint to. And so Christine, I believe, you know, was very honest and, you know, that there is no executive director. So um, the town manager was out on vacation at that time, or maternity leave, or whatever, uh, family leave. And um, so the assistant town manager got on, and he blamed you guys. <laughs> he said the town meeting hasn't made an appropriation. And you can read all this, you know, um, at your leisure. And so I guess I'm not here to tell you how much you should do. I'm here to ask some questions. Because what happens is then after, you know, they made that statement, um, it turns out that supposedly Christine Bongiorno, the Health and Human Services Director, well, she fulfills the role of the executive director when there's not an appropriation made. And, um, you know, I, I almost bought into that, except she's never gone to a meeting. Um, and even when I approached her after this about, you know, a complaint, um, you know, she's not really doing it. And I don't blame her. She's actually probably not qualified if you look at what the bylaw said, the bylaw has very specific qualifications, one of which is to be appointed by the Board of Selectmen, which 
well, they've never done that either. And so here we are in a situation where there's a legitimate, serious complaint, and there's no one to ask, and I'm being told by the town that you guys haven't put together a <coughs> appropriation in 10 or more years, or a town meeting, which is me guys as well, hasn't put together uh, or approved an appropriation in 10 years, and that um, I asked, you know, what would the budget, what requests have been made, and there was no response. You know, they said that they'd work with me to get that, and after about, you know, a certain length of time, I went out and I said, well, you know, let's put an appropriation. So I have some questions for you guys. You're the budget people, you're the ones to, you know, help educate guys like me on town meeting about, you know, um, issues will have to do with appropriations. So my first question to you all, and I'm hoping someone can dig it out of their memory, is um, where in the budget <coughs> is there an appropriation for a human rights executive director? <coughs> well, Article 35 last year is the appropriation for committees and commissions. And under 35F is the Human Rights Commission. And the appropriation was $4,500 approved by town meeting. So uh, within that uh, is the money to hire whatever people they can. And nobody's, Gloria, has anybody ever asked for anything? They, I actually talked to, uh, they said the 4500 is fine for next year also. So. so every year we ask the Human Rights Commission, you know, do they, are they satisfied with the appropriation from last year? Or, uh, and if they want some more, then we'll set up a hearing for them. And every year they say the same thing. Okay. No, the $4,500 is fine. So the $4,500, I imagine, since it's coming from the Human Rights Commission, as you stated, is actually for, you know, probably, um, you know, uh, um, materials. You know, to, to, because if you recall, the bylaw specifically says that it's a town employee which no one in the Human Rights Commission is a town employee, that will work for the town manager. So I can't imagine that it would be in a budget that wasn't under the town manager's control. So I think that 4500 Al, that you're referencing is actually for incidental costs of printing and right. things of that nature. All I'm saying is that that's all they've ever asked for. No, I understand. Yeah. And I don't think that it should be actually coming from the Human Rights Commission if it's an employee of the town manager. So I'd expect to see it in the town manager's budget. I mean, do you agree? He's never I asked. A, um, the Human Rights Commission, the members of the Human Rights Commission, although they're not compensated, they are considered town employees. Oh, the special municipal employees. Well, stuff, yeah. I don't think they are, actually. I bet you if we look <laughs> that they've never been approved by the Board of Selectmen as well, special municipal pool employees. What hasn't been approved? That they're special municipal employees. Yeah. I bet, you know, there's a specific process that has to be undertaken, I and I will put dollars to donuts. Um, they, they have never been approved as special municipal employees. If I could ask one more question. Uh, you, you mentioned that you said you filed a concern and there was no one to file it to. Is that what you said? Well, if we could go through the whole process, but the bylaw is very clear. No, no, I'm asking you. you no, but the bylaw is very clear. The executive director. So, for instance, after I went to the Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, you know, I asked them to set up a subcommittee. And they did. I went to the school department and they set up a subcommittee. So I asked, you know, when are you going to meet and, you know, what's going on? And I asked Christine Buongiorno. And, you know, essentially there's no response. She's not acting as the executive director. She's not working with the people making the complaint. And if you read the bylaw, that is the role of the executive director. I, I'm just going back. With the Human Rights Commission, there was a chairman of that commission, correct? Christine Carney. Right. Right. And when you went to her expressing your concern, are you telling me they didn't take any act? Didn't I didn't say that, sir. No, I'm asking. Did, what did you? you, you well, you so, started, so, you so the only thing I. There was no one to go to. Well, hold on, hold on. I, all I asked for was who the executive director was. And Christine Carney was kind enough to say there hasn't been one. And that's it. But that's not, when you started, you said you had a concern and you had no one to go to. That's Correct. And that's true. And it's still the case. 
there's no one to take the complaint. Christine? I'm what is trying, this? Uh, why do right, you not believe that that's the case? Did you file a complaint with the Human Rights Commission? Um, I don't know, frankly. Did you I went to, I sat with the Human Rights Commission, but I don't know if there's a complaint. There's no one who's got a complaint open. You'd expect that I would have heard a response, which did isn't allowed. Did you file life. a complaint form, which is? No, I did not file a complaint form. Procedure is. I did not file a complaint form. Right, so you have not filed a complaint? Well, I haven't filed a complaint form. So, there, so you have nothing before the Human Rights Commission right now? That's not the case, no. Where did you get that? Because to initiate the complaint process, you need to file a complaint with the Human Rights Commission. Oh, you know more about it than I do. And right. here I, I went to the Human Rights Commission and sat with I, them. I do know. I, I'm yeah. a founding member of the Human Rights Commission. Great. I sat in the Human Rights Commission. For so why do you think they wouldn't years. have asked me to file a complaint form um, if I went there in front of them? If you indicated that you wanted to file a complaint, they would have sent you a complaint form to fill out. Hmm. So they did. Now, didn't. I also know that that $4,500, most of it is spent to pay for an administrative position. Mm. And that person, their, their job, his or her job, is to, during the hours that she is working or he is working, to answer phones and send out complaint forms. And that's the executive um, director position, you're that saying? That is as an administrative position. So it's not the executive director. There is no formal executive director, but it is an administrative position. So though, but there is in the bylaw that set up the Human Rights Commission. To mm -hmm. answer your questions and send you a complaint but form. But there is. Receive the complaint form and, and send it on to the commission to start the process. When that person is not available because it's a part-time position, um, human, the, the Christine Bongiorno steps in and makes sure the phones are answered and that complaints are responded to and complaint forms are sent out or co contacts the chair of the commission to make sure that the complaint form is sent out. So then we agree that it's really an administrative $4,500 for administrative, not for an executive director, who is a, someone who's a town employee who reports the It is not manager. solely for materials or things like that. It is for, to staff. It's to an staff administrative cost. Office. Yeah, it's an administrative cost. Right. It's not the executive director position. There, I think it's correct that there, there is no formal executive director. No, but this is where I think you and I are, were talking past each other. There is. The 1993 bylaw there's clearly no, states no that there's an executive director position. And, and before you... Um, so there is, there is one, just, and we agree, and it's just not being funded. And before you submitted this warrant article, did you go before the Human Rights Commission and talk to them about this? Um, yes, I went to the Human Rights Commission and met with them. And they said that, no, they don't need an executive director or they don't want... No, they didn't say any such thing. What did they say? Well, we, we, were talking, we had a long-ranging conversation. The result of it, to answer, I guess, you and Dave, is that they formed a subcommittee that meets with the school department, school committee, that also formed a subcommittee, that are trying to look into this. But the, I think we're going into the next warrant article. In, Let, the complaint. <laughs> The complaint, which apparently never happened because there was no form That's given to me. That's different than what you're asking for. That is the part of the, the, the complaint process, is that a subcommittee is formed to investigate and come back with So they did it without a form. Right. Right. So apparently it works regardless of it, whether there's an executive director or not. Um, you know something? You'd like to think maybe from that perspective that it worked. But from my perspective, and that's why I'm saying it, it doesn't work. Because the complaint was made oh, five months ago. I haven't heard anything. But that For, uh, so so exactly five months true. ago, the complaint was made. I haven't heard anything. Have so I don't think it's working at all. Have you been given a copy of the bylaws of the commission? Um, I Googled it. It was on the town's website. Right. So if you did that, you would know that the executive director does not investigate any complaints. It's the subcommittee that's formed by the commission that investigates. Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't do this until after I met with them, of course, right? First I met with them. It's not like it was some, like, uh, uh, process that, you know, is clearly written down. If you went to the town's website, for instance, they didn't even have the current members. There was no information at all about how to even contact them. It took over a month to get down and to actually meet with them. So it wasn't until after I met with them. Well, okay, so I missed one of them, I get the next one. And so um, after I met with them, that's when I started to look into, well, how does this work? And that's when I looked up the bylaw. So the Human Rights Commission does not support <coughs> the that. 
Oh, I haven't asked them if they have or not. Have you asked them? You, you have not asked them to support this article before you submitted it. Um, I had a number of them sign it. Has the commission itself indicated it supports this one article? I haven't asked them. So I have no idea if they support it or not. Okay, are there any other questions? Well, I, I have a couple more. Because so okay, we well, don't know how much it's budgeted for. Apparently, the town manager is not in his budget. Is, is that a correct assumption at this point? Uh, the, the, um, the Human Rights Commission, along with the other commissions, are funded under a separate appropriation for committees and commissions. So it's, you're saying that it's not in the town manager's budget? Correct. It's... That's right. Okay, that's what uh, I just want to make sure that we're on well. The, same the, the manager submits budgets, submitted budgets as mm -hmm. items at the back. I haven't checked, but usually has money for different commissions and committees. Uh, it's in the budget but, book. Yes. But whatever, it's in the finance committee report, and we report to town meeting. But Christine just said, as a founding member of the Human Rights Commission, that forty-five hundred dollars that you mentioned is for administrative costs, not to fund the executive director position. So. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. As far as I can tell at this point, there is no budget or funding for the executive director position that's called for in the bylaw. Uh, is this, uh, is this not Well, a, a, if, I mean, if there is an administrative position there um, that's paid out of this, uh, that provides administrative services uh, working a few hours a month, uh, and that position was called executive director. Oh, now that's, that's, that's a great use of semantics because if you look at the bylaw, it's very clear. It's someone who reports to the town manager. This administrative assistant doesn't report to the town manager. It's someone who has background in human rights. It's not an administrative assistant position. It's someone who takes complaints and monitors them and contacts the complainant. That's not an administrative assistant. So I, I, I you know, respectfully disagree. Um, it's not in the budget. And so that's why I'm here. I just want to fund it. Town meeting, this is a town meeting committee. This is something town meeting was concerned with. This is something that's important that the town of Allen can get right. We've become more and more diverse of a community. We should have someone who is funded to do this job. It's in the bylaw. And so that's why I'm here tonight. You tell me how much it should be. And so that's the next question. What, in 93, I imagine, when it was passed, that it was actually funded. And so maybe someone's got to do some forensic accounting to find out what was the intent of town meeting and how much was it funded the first decade of its existence. Because I think that will answer the question of how much it should be. I, I'm happy to do that analysis, but do, you know, I won't probably come back here. That's what I'd bring to town meeting. I think it's important that we fund what town meeting has for a commission that is very important. Don't you agree? Okay. You said you had another question for us? Um, well, I guess that was the second one, is how much has been funded. So we know it's not funded today. And the second one is how much, and so I open this up to, you know, to the committee. How much do you think we should fund an executive director position for? Well, it hasn't been the, in a conclusion that we, we don't have an executive director. Uh, we'd have to find out a little bit more information about it uh, to do that. You don't have to have a full-time executive director, you could have a part-time executive director. That's what I imagine it would be. Sure. Yeah. But certainly one that's a, you know, a real position, you know, who's appointed by the Board of Selectmen <coughs> on some, you know, you know some <coughs> schedule. Yeah. Someone that, you know, um, is known to the community so that if you had a complaint, you'd know who to go to. Yeah. You wouldn't have to wait a month until the, you know, political body met. Well, Dean? So, I, I will admit to being a little behind for a couple minutes. We were in this hearing until I actually looked up the statute, which I don't know if anyone has in front of the bylaw to anyone has in front of except Alan is doing what I did. So I just want to read it because I think this is the heart of what we're talking about. It says, Executive Director, before appointing an Executive Director, the Town Manager shall obtain the approval of the Board of Selectmen and consider the recommendation of the Commission. 
the executive director shall be an employee of the town and report to the town manager. The prospective executive director shall have demonstrable experience in human and civil rights as well as proven ability to work cooperatively in a diverse community. Next paragraph. Subject to the direction of the commission, the executive director shall be responsible for the overall administration of the commission's activities and shall serve as its executive officer. The executive director shall have the power and duty to initiate activities designed to educate and inform the town about the effects of prejudice, intolerance, and bigotry. To receive and or initiate complaints, which I guess is what you meant there, um, and in investigations of discriminatory practices as defined by local, state, and federal law. To report his or her findings to the commission and to attempt mediation of any complaint alleging discrimination under applicable local, state, and federal law when there is a cause for such complaint. So is this the statute that you're referencing? That's exactly it, Dean. Okay. Thank you very much. And so you can see, it's not an administrative role. It's not something that's low. It's not something that you just put in there to take calls. This is someone who has experience in civil rights and investigating complaints. And so there isn't one. Let's not kid each other. We haven't been doing it. And the question before you is, if you vote no action to do it, or you're not going to put it, the effort in to get it, why do we have the bylaw at all? And if you look at the bylaw, the executive director is the key. The Human Rights Commission, for all of its you know, meeting together, has no ability. You need to have an executive director. Or just get rid of the bylaw. Let's not just like have nothing. So is that your recommendation, to get rid of the bylaw altogether? No, I'm here as the opponent <coughs> of a warrant article to fund it. And I'm meeting resistance, which I'm really, I, it almost feels like snow removal again. Mary Margaret? Okay. So I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So you want an executive director, you want to know an official, have an official position because you feel like your complaint wasn't? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's beyond my complaint because you never do stuff just for yourself. I mean, I don't even live okay, on that. So, side like that. so, so I'm looking for the, for the town to fully fund part of a bylaw that was put in place 28 years ago. Or 25 because, years ago. Because you feel like it was... Oh, because of my personal experiences, I actually had a legitimate complaint. Uh -huh. And so, you know, we could argue whether it's a legitimate complaint. The school department, the school committee, the Human Rights Commission have all formed a subcommittee. Right. They feel it's a legitimate complaint. Okay. So, so there's no question about, you know, the fact that there was a legitimate complaint. Right. The, the experience I had was you know, that there was no one to turn to. And when I looked into, you know, who is responsible, who could take my call, there was no one there. And when I asked the town, well, who is the person? The, the, the response is no one. So that's when I put together the warrant article because I think there should be someone. So, and having the human, we have a very active human rights commission, so that wasn't, and, uh, and having Christine Bongiorno as the um, acting as the executive director is uh, well. I, 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 you know, if it was Christine Bongiorno acting as the human rights executive director, and she was funded and it was part of her okay. job, you know, but that's not what I was led to believe, okay. and it's not the truth. I mean, come on, she's never gone to a meeting. Never gone to a never gone to a meeting. The board of selectmen never appointed her. They say it's part of her job description. I mean, uh -huh. <coughs> I don't believe it. Right. Okay. Are there are there any other questions for Mr. Harrington? Okay. Um, <coughs> you do have one article. I was just curious. Another article on the. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, oh, here it is. Article 9, Bylaw Amendment, Human Rights Commission, to see if the town will vote uh, to update uh, Human Rights Commission for complaints against town departments or take any action related thereto. So um, is this to expand the Human Rights Commission's purview to consider complaints against town departments and agencies? Are, is that the focus? Well, this is, um, this article, was it number 9? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's nine in this yeah, one. Yeah, Article Nine. Um, is it a finance article, right? No, it's not. For any right. appropriation. So now, you know, I'd be very generous with my time, and you know, you guys, I respect this committee and the, and the work they do. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm not here to really like, you know, advocate for it. <clears throat> I'm not here. It's not a finance committee article. So you don't really have, you know, really any purview other than each one of you have a vote. Well, two thirds of you have a vote at town meeting. And so I'd like to, you know, ask you, this is your chance to give me input. Because frankly, I haven't given it a whole lot of thought in the last couple of weeks. You know, I've been busy with other things. But I have two months to really work on this. And it's going to come in like everything else at a, you know, if you've seen me in town meeting, it's going to come in, you know, well researched. And so I'm going to open it up to you ask you what your input would be given sort of what you know what's going on in the greater world how we could make the Human Rights Commission better would it, um, would it make sense uh, Nine. 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 even to uh, look toward other communities to see if they have a Human Rights Commission and if they have an executive director and so I can tell you, I have done a little get, bit. Get that information, maybe what you're So like paid. Somerville, Somerville's a great example. Somerville has a, what I call a muscular human rights commission. And they actually have taken, um, for instance, <coughs> their public safety um, uh, department to task for discriminatory practices in arresting. Yeah. And so, so there's absolutely um, uh, things that we'll learn from outside communities and how they handle it. And, uh, and that's actually going to probably be the basis of what I put forward. I think what I meant more specifically would be uh, how that individual executive director is compensated. Yeah, well, this isn't the same have, thing as executive. some real numbers to come back. So I think we're mixing now the two articles, and this is what I was a little bit nervous about. So the, the, the executive director is Article 33. I'm back on. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, which we sort of closed. But so, so this would be. Well, it's not, I mean, I don't want to mix the two, even though they're similar. The second one's a bylaw. It has nothing to do with funding. I'd absolutely look into other communities to see how they fund it, you yeah. know, to figure out how much an appropriation I'm going to ask for. And I'd love to have, you know, you guys help me with that, to actually find out, you know, because there's going to be some legwork, and to find out how much we should fund it for, what's reasonable, to have a person who actually is going to spend enough time to, you know, or to have the ability to spend the time to do that. And the problem, Christine Buongiorno, I mean, I love Christine Buongiorno. She's really good at what she does. I can't imagine that she can actually drop all of her other responsibilities to be involved in a complaint that's extremely sensitive and time consuming. Okay, Paul? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, on the subject of Article 36, 37, whatever it is. 33. 33. I, think, I think that we have heard Mr. Harrington's arguments at least four or five times now. I think, in fact, they're very compelling, and I will support some kind of connection, but I don't think there's any more information we're getting on it. And as far as Article 9, um, we have no expertise in this group, and we don't have a lot of time this year, so... I think we should probably just um, uh, finish the hearing and move on. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <coughs> See you at town meeting. Okay. That's it for our articles. Um, why don't we go back to the first ones, Article 30. Now, 37 and 38, um, Charlie can't be here for these two weeks, and he asked that action on those two articles be postponed until he gets back so he can make recommendations on it. And I think, uh, you know, I'm inclined to... Uh, let those two go until he gets back and he can come back. On the other hand, Article 39, they're going to withdraw anyway. Uh, so it seems to me just to move ahead, uh, I'd entertain a motion of no action. Second? Okay, Article 39, um, it's been moved and seconded for no action. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay.
<coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> Article 33. Christine, when you were on the committee, how, how did a, who would people call, how would the process work? There, uh, I'm assuming the same process exists now that existed then, and I haven't heard otherwise. There uh, is a part-time staff person whose, whose job is to be in the office a certain number of hours every week, um, and they're set hours, so um, people can call in or, or stop in during those hours and there'd be someone there. Um, in the event that a call came um, when that person wasn't in the office, um, Christine Buongiorno, somebody in her, a staff person in her office would take the phone call or the complaint and pass it on to the chair of the Human Rights Commission. And what happens with a complaint, there's no complaint really that starts in, until a form is filled out because you have to, uh, a complainant has to uh, be willing to, to uh, file a written formal complaint. When the complaint comes in, then the, then the chair um, um, designates a subcommittee of three people and hands the complaint to the, the, the committee and then the complaint process goes. The complaint is investigated by that committee, a hearing is held, uh, there's an investigation, there may be some mediation, and then that subcommittee makes a decision and comes back to the Human Rights Commission and makes their recommendation about what to do. Now, despite the fact that he apparently has not filed a formal written complaint, it seems like the complaint process is proceeding apace. Um, and although he may, uh, it sounds like he's uh, unhappy with the speed with which it's being handled, the committee only meets committee only meets once a, a month and the subcommittee meets maybe once in between full meetings uh, maybe more depending on the availability of the subcommittee members to get together um, so it sounds like uh, the process is as established by the bylaws and the rule in this in the rules and regulations that the Commission itself has established it seems like his complaint <coughs> process is working um, I think the, there's, a, there's the issue of the title. There is no executive director. There ne never has been. And who reports to? <coughs> right. Um, the staff person is that they that they had since the staff they've had a staff person reports to uh, Christine Bongiorno, um, uh, and presumably to the town manager or or her. Um, the, um, so there, ha there has not been uh, an executive director. Um, would the Human Rights Commission love an executive director? You know, full-time um, director, sure. Um, but um, they, uh, I think they're satisfied with the arrangement right now. The other thing um, that you have to consider is that there aren't scores of complaints coming in. Um, they're just, they're just not, they just don't happen. Uh, and much of the staff person's job is really to get ready for the next meeting, um, to deal with the uh, Human Rights Commission dialogues and book groups and um, uh, uh, community events. That's really, that takes up more of the, the commission's time, I think, than any complaint investigation process. So I think for that reason, um, it's been a satisfactory arrangement for the Human Rights Commission. I think, I mean, it's, 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 uh, well, David and then uh, Carol. Just, yeah, um, I'm sitting here trying to, I, I was happy to be president of town meeting, although I, I've never been a town meeting member. But that night that that article come up uh, in reference to forming the Human Rights Commission, um, in my, the best of my memory, he says to me, it was probably one of the best debates or, that I've ever witnessed at town meeting, um, for and against, and, and, and there was other, the original Human Rights Commission article was um, uh, 
changed at town meeting. Part of the article, in that article itself, it also had subpoena powers, which this town meeting voted down at that time in 1993. Uh, having said that, my um, service on the school committee and my service as a police officer, when the uh, human rights issue come up, the Human Rights Commission always was worked very well up to, the, to its present day, as far as I know, and what I experienced with both the school system and the police department. Um, they worked hand in hand ever since the commission was, was formed. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there is, is there a, there's a chairman of the Human Rights Commission. Now, Christina's right, there's never been an executive director. Um, I think if we went back to 1993, in, in, in going forward from 93, you'd find out perhaps maybe that due to economics, they could not hire. And that is looking for it to work quicker. Um, it, but it's not up to us to say whether the town should have an executive director. I think that that's not out of the bylaw. This is the finance committee will set a fee. Or the, I think it's the board of selectmen and, and the town manager to do that, not us. And let the town meeting vote that job. It's really not us that do that, in my view. Carol? I just simply need to know who Christine is. I'm sorry? What, who is Christine and what is her title? Christine Bergiorno is Director of Health and Human Services, and Christine Carney is on the Human Rights Commission. Okay, but it's the staff person. So Christine Bongiorno is head of... Director of Health and Human Services. Okay. I think that uh, this is going to be an issue before town meeting. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's not going to go away. Uh, we're going to have the town manager in here Gloria, do you remember if this was one of the issues we listed for him? Um, uh, yes. It was? Yes. Okay. Because I think he stated here that they were in the process of looking for somebody and hiring uh, for this particular mm -hmm. position. So um, I would suggest that we... Wait till the manager comes before us. We don't have a date yet, do we? Yeah. Okay. We and just, he knows the thing is there, so we ask him, uh, how does this work? Who has the greatest responsibility? Have you hired somebody yet? You know, just get all our ducks in order, and then, you know, vote on this article at, at that time uh, on that. So, Dean and then John. Well, the only thing I would say when, for when he comes in is I think in some ways we're, we're overthinking Right, I think this is a clear, I don't, want to call, I don't want to get caught a clear statutory issue or a clear issue of law, but it's just a pretty simple issue of law as far as I can see that we created a commission 22 years ago, we wrote a bylaw, they subsequently implemented it and are working, and it's actually working in such a way that they don't need the position of executive director, so we just need to clean up the bylaw. But I think we're sort of getting past the we're getting into the administrative practice of the Human Rights Commission <coughs> of the bylaws. So the bylaws are very clear. You need to have an executive director. They need to be an employee of the town. They need to report to the town manager. And it's pretty clear cut. But the reality of the situation is they don't need that. So you should just remove it. Okay. I mean, that's I know I know that's be part of it, but I, I, I hope we don't get into this sort of discussion of where we're just ignoring the law and trying to no. arbitrate it. But I, I think the uh, the you know the way to do it and uh, you know, it's an appropriation article. We're responsible for recommending it. If we're going to say yes or no, um, then you know we should we, we should have done all the research. We've talked to Mr. Harrington. Now we should have the manager come in, explain how the process works, and then vote yes or no after that. So that's all I'm all I'm suggesting uh, on this. I mean, the selectmen can uh, appoint uh, Christine as the executive director of it. Uh, and you know, doesn't have to be a full time or anything like that. And, and uh, she has their administrative person report to her and go to the meetings and does what she does before. So there is a way to deal with it without adding a, a, a body um, on that. Uh, John, well, who is the current chair? Christine Carney. Christine Carney. How many people on the commission? Uh, Thirteen. 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 Wow. Okay. Uh, Grant? Um, I guess point of technicality or process. Um, so some of these 
um, say, appropriate sum of money, and some of these warrants articles actually have a specific amount. Um, how would, when do we know what the amount is, and how does that work with the with the, the yeah. committee here? Well, I mean, as it, it, I think as a couple people have said, it's not our responsibility, you know, to build the budget that comes before us. Uh, if, if the Human Rights Commission doesn't think they need any more money and the town manager doesn't think they need any more money uh, to do the responsibilities required of them in the bylaws, then uh, I think it, we'd be hard pressed to say, no, we think you do need the money. Uh, well, I mean, don't they have to say how much they want they're asking for here at some point? They're asking for a sum of money. They never, uh, Mr. Harrington and his, they never have to say we want X amount? Or well, they, they can. They don't have to. Okay. And they submitted the Warren article, and it's us, up to us to take action. And uh, if the manager came before us and said, you know, yes, we do need somebody. It should be half time. I recommend uh, $30,000 uh, uh, to do this. Then we'd take action on, on that recommendation. But uh, <coughs> no, Mr. Harrington is not, have the, is not required of him. It would be, you know, quite often they have a request, as you see it in several right. of the Warren articles. But they don't have to. Okay. 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 So, uh, Gory, it's on the list that we give to the manager, um, and we'll have him come in probably like early March. And there's a whole series of articles we're going to ask him about, including art in East Ma East Arlington uh, on the highway. Uh, and we'll ask him about this, and then we'll take a vote <coughs> at that point, depending on how you feel about it. Okay. Uh, and I I asked the question about the town agencies because. Theoretically, if it puts a, a greater responsibility on a town agency to deal with it, then you know that's that could be a financial. I, I don't think that would be the case in this, but I thought I'd ask. But John, I can't recall. Uh, who is it? How are members of the, of the Human Rights Commission appointed? Um, um, a third by the town moderator, a third by the school committee, and a third by the board select, or a third by the town manager with the approval of the board select. Okay, um, let's take a look at the, I think I need a new watch. It says it's a quarter of seven. Oh, well. Quarter of nine. <laughs> quarter of nine. Quarter of seven. Yeah, yeah. Optimistic. Optimistic. Okay, let's take a look at the warrant and go through and see if there's any, art art any other articles uh, that we want to hear. Okay, page three, report of committees. Page four, Department of Wisdom and Bart, Assistant Town Moderator, uh, amend to require that all applications for building. Okay, this is the zoning article. Um, this is the article that we, we, um, we requested that Mr. Loretti come before us to discuss it. Uh, and he said no, because it really doesn't have any financial impact. The manager obviously thought there was a financial impact. Uh, I forwarded to you uh, Mr. Loretti's piece on why he doesn't think there'll be a financial impact. And I think this was one of the issues we asked the manager to speak to. Yes. OK. Um, it didn't initially strike me as a huge impact, if, but it depends on how the building inspector keeps his, keeps his record. So uh, we'll, we'll hear that from the manager. Uh, zoning bylaw amendment. We, um, this is to zoning bylaws reported by the redevelopment board, but the finance committee does have the authority to make recommendations or comments on virtually anything it wants to that he thinks has a financial impact. So, <coughs> uh, zoning bylaw regulation of posted event notices. Um, I'm going to go through them, and if you think we need to hear that, you have to speak up. Uh, bylaw amendment limiting speaking time for announcements and reports. Bylaw amendment human rights commission. Uh, bylaw amendment description of the Mount Gilboa. That doesn't sound. Bylaw Amendment Establishment of a Community Preservation Act. Well, we 
fought that one out last year. Revision of town uh, 2020 standing committee. Uh, disposition of real estate 1207 Mass Ave. This is inserted by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Goria, we asked the manager to speak to that, didn't he? Didn't we? Yes. Okay. So when the manager comes in now, uh, a couple of our members uh, gave comments into the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Foskett wants to use the money uh, to help with the Stratton School. Um, Alan wanted to use it for a... What was the? Um, I wanted to have the town provide it for a certain period of time before it went up to sale as a potential incubator space. Okay. Uh, for but only on a you know, test basis. Okay. So uh, we'll have ask him how he what he's going to recommend again. It, you know, it's not our immediate recommendation, but it obviously has a financial impact. So. Uh, uh, Disposition of land in Lexington. I don't think that. Home Rule Board of Assessors changes. I put that out last time and nobody wanted to hear it. Uh, acceptance of legislation, complete streets program. I've asked the manager to come and speak to us about what this was all about. Uh, acceptance of local option taxes. This is the article we put in every year uh, to see if the state legislature actually passes something which we could accept. Uh, either a uh, um, to allow us to tax something, to put in any kind of fines, to just do anything. So it's uh, it just sort of sat there and uh, there probably won't be anything, but you never can tell these days. So uh, I will probably, when that comes up, the selectmen will probably move no action because there's nothing, and I'll move to table until the end of town meeting, just in case. And, and then if nothing <laughs> comes up, we'll, it could go no action. Uh, CB, uh, I'm sorry. yeah, Grant. Uh, Article 14, uh, the disposition of Cliff Adams. You say that oh. that is financial, right? <coughs> Article 14, disposition of uh, real estate. Well, that, that's. Say Town manager should dispose of or grant access through of a parcel of undeveloped land. So it sounds like there's a piece of undeveloped land in Lexington. Is that part of the Boozer property up there? On the well, the Great Meadows area, I think. Maybe the Boozer the, the property. Mm -hmm. the oh, oh. That's right on the alley. But yeah, I'll up near the Reds. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Cliff is on the closer to Mass Ave. By the wetlands and the bike path, the meadows and the bike path. So it sounds like this is they want some kind of access through town land um, to develop something, I guess. Is that, does anybody want the manager to speak to that? You should at least hear what it is. Okay. Gloria, could you add that to the list and give the manager a call? We just want to hear what it is. I might have to give them a whole night. <laughs> okay, acceptance of uh, complete streets, local option taxes, CG revolving funds. Okay, collective bargaining. Did we have that down on the list to speak? He probably... Okay, add that to the list. We want to just find the status. I mean, if he's in. Uh, position reclassification. Um, Carol, uh, that'll be your, your bailiwick. So, yes, and we can do that in three weeks. In three weeks? Yeah, maybe two. Okay. I'm meeting with her next week. Sounds good. Okay, the budgets will be starting to hear those hopefully fairly soon. Uh, appropriation, real and personal. Any uh, word on when we're hearing that? Um, February 23rd, 8:15. Okay, so we got that down. Uh, <coughs> Question. 
Yes. When is the manager coming in? We don't know yet. <clears throat> okay. I, we, there's a whole series of articles we usually ask questions later on. So my guess is maybe first week in March. Yeah. I'll read. I had emailed him um, on February 10th. I'll re-email him tomorrow. Yeah. And add the stuff we're at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 23 we're hearing on the 23rd. 24 is capital budget on the 16th. Uh, 15, uh, 25 will be from the uh, hmm, town treasurer. Will Charlie have that? Uh, Probably Charlie will have that also. So. <laughs> Who, who has the treasurer's budget? Um, Bill, it's a view of Brian. Brian. Brian has it. Okay. Um, okay, well, if th that'll probably be in together, and the one person from the treasurer's office will be there. Okay, sewer and water. Uh, ask the manager to give numbers, and of course, Grant, you'll be working on that. Uh, Minuteman. Have you heard anything back from Stephen? Um, I heard on March second. Okay, so is that that's a that's official? Um, mostly, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I sent out. I got a uh, a piece on the budget from um, Sue Scheffler, mm -hmm. uh, our new uh, school committee person. So I, I sent that out to everybody. So that'll give us. Uh, you know, some indication where this is going. Uh, committees and commissions. Uh, have you heard back from everybody? Um, I have talked to almost everybody uh, except the historical commission. Um, I have to call them again. But everybody um, has said the money they received last year is fine except the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, they got 15000 last year, and they want nothing this year because... Isn't that wonderful? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, they said if they want more, they, they have money to draw from, and they'll draw from it, and then see what happens next year. Okay, and that sounds good. That was the plan last year. Yeah. We give it that, and, and yeah, that's right. Build it up again if they need it. Yeah. Christine? Now, can we hear from the Recycling Committee? Because if you remember last year, we started to um, fund a, uh, a paid position recycling coordinator. And uh, I'm interested in knowing uh, what the Recycling Committee has been doing historically with their budget and, and that now that we have a paid position in town, what will they be doing with their budget going forward? And, and Did we fund that? Actually, in their had a part time we had a part time it started as a part time position a long time ago and it was funded through the white goods yeah. Yeah. collection. Right. What happened was well, that was about ten years ago, but yes. Yeah, right when I got the committee, that's yeah. why I remember it. <laughs> Last year I think there was I Charlie would remember this better than me, but I think the white goods revenue went away and at the same time the white right. goods revenue was going away, the position got moved from part time to full time. Right. Last that's, year. That's that's true on that Okay. Uh, now we could um, we could have the manager report on that also, or do you want to hear directly from the recycling? Uh, I'm interested in, in the budget of the recycling committee. I I I, I know what the recycling coordinator, the paid position, does, um, and I can, we can get information from the DW. But but now that we now have this full time, well, this almost full time position. Yeah. What is it that we that the recycling committee is doing with the money that we had been giving the three thousand we give to them? Okay, Gloria, could you ask the recycle? Could I say something about that? Sure, Peter. I I'm on the recycling committee. Have been for a long time. Um, I'm sure they would be glad to come in and, and to give you a pitch on recycling and why it's a good thing and so forth. Uh, it's the citizens committee. It's three thousand dollars. Are you sure you really want to do that? 
Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm interested as well. I'm interested. Okay, Gloria, could you call <coughs> them? And on the 18th, that's a week from Wednesday, uh, why don't you add to the, uh, we have the tourism committee coming in. Why don't you see if they could come in right after that, the recycling, uh, for say, I don't know, 8.15 mm -hmm. for the recycling. And could you then add to that list that we'll vote on all committees and commissions? So that'll be the one time we're just going to vote on all of them and get that out of the way. Carol? While we're talking about recycling, who has DPW for their budget? I do. Can, can you talk about, about what that person has done in the last year? Because I remember last year we were told that the reason she needed to go full time was because of some efforts with apartments. And I live in an apartment and I haven't seen anything in the last year. So my question is, what has she done in the last year? I haven't met with the DPW director yet, but that is um, one, one of the many questions on the list. So thank you. Okay. So next Wednesday we'll hear from recycling and we'll, uh, and we'll vote on all the committees and commissions. <coughs> and, uh, um, question? Yes. Uh, even the Uncle Sam committee didn't ask for more money? Do I have Uncle Sam yet? <laughs> or aren't they on that list? No. Aren't they separate? Aren't they on a different list? They're not here. Which I'm sorry, which member which oh, in putting the article warrant together, you mean. Right. Yeah. Which committee were you asking about? Uncle Sam. Doesn't he have his own warrant article? Yeah. He usually does. He usually does, so Alan's suggesting that maybe it wasn't included in the warrant. Somehow got, <laughs> somehow got overlooked. Uh, on the other hand, the article here does say, and any other town committee or commission. So. There's plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, appropriation celebrations and appropriations for miscellaneous. So what I'd like to do, if everybody could take a look at those three, look at last year's warrant. I'd like to uh, vote next Wednesday on the committees, the commissions, the cele celebrations, and the uh, miscellaneous. Um, and uh, Do we have the town manager's numbers for those? Um, I think they're in the back of the budget book. And if not, nobody wants any more than they were going to give last year. So. Uh, but like miscellaneous, does that, that include the real defense fund? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, the East Arlington, Massachusetts, uh, appropriation for public art, East Arlington, Massachusetts Avenue corridor. Uh, process to select in public art. Now, has everybody seen the uh, painting uh, on Marathon Street? Yes. Yeah. That, that is definitely cool. They didn't go all the way towards really authentic Greek <laughs> athletes, but you know. Uh, okay, the manager's gonna speak about that. Uh, Human Rights Commission will wait, uh, the executive director will wait to hear what the manager has to say on that. Uh, Water Bodies is next, or the 23rd. Harry Barber is the 23rd. Hey, Al, I the 34th. Water bodies, maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit on this. This money is we give to the, the group that we list here, the Vision 2020 Environmental Task Force, to do the work that they talk about every year. But if we needed to do other work in the in Spy Pond, we're not limited to just this article. We can appropriate it to the DPW, right? If we start throwing, if we start throwing, um, snow into the pond to get rid of it. I mean, are we stuck? Are we? I talked to the manager about that already. <laughs> no, I just wanted to make sure that we're yeah. not because like, they actually have an appropriation amount in the article. I know it. And, and my feeling has always been that if you put a dollar amount, you can't appropriate more than that. But you're right. You know, we, we, we could, I theoretically, add money to the public works budget or if it's an emergency type thing transferred from the reserve fund. So, I mean, there are other options. 
Because, yeah, the only reason I asked is if this wasn't final, they, then they could pull the amount out. Yeah. Be helpful. I keep telling people not to put dollar amounts in the Warren articles, but. There you go. Ahead. They do it anyway. That's, okay, so that's the mechanics. You can't ask for more than what you put in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, 30. Thirty-six is uh, tourism, which is next Wednesday. Uh, Article thirty-seven and thirty-eight will wait for Charlie's return. Thirty-nine, we just voted on our first article. Appropriation. Okay, then we got the long-term stabilization and the rest of the uh, articles. I think what I'd like to try to do is next week on. Uh, the 18th is vote on all of our articles except for the fiscal stability stabilization fund. May basically, any money we save uh, or uh, we have that we did not ex that we expected to do, we can increase the stabilization the fiscal stability fund. And if we have to appropriate more money than we thought we did, then that num number gets down. So that's sort of the final balancing number. Uh, and. We'll see what Alan's spreadsheets finally look at, probably in uh, early March. Uh, but we can f we know what free cash is. Uh, do we know what the cemetery? Not, not yet. Well, okay, so we do that. Uh, overlay and the long-term stabilization. So we could get going to those. Okay, we got a resolution on the removal of town meeting members and the master plan endorsement, neither of which are really our articles. Alan? I'm thinking that with the master plan, at least you know, part of the objective of that was to address structural deficit and look for new revenue sources. I wonder if it might not be worth our time to have sort of a private presentation of the master plan specifically focusing on the fiscal issues to educate the finance committee as much as anything else. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Specifically focusing on Specifically focusing on things that provide sort of not out of hope, but just so we understand the financial aspects of what we have to plan. Yeah, specifically being the operative word, right? Okay. People think that's a good idea? Yeah. Okay. Uh, according with my usual policy, Alan, could you call the uh, planning director and ask her to coordinate it with Gloria um, to give us a, a basic summary of those sections? Uh, uh, doesn't have to be huge and long, but right. and perhaps, uh, well, the master plan has been out for a while, isn't it? I mean, we could go on the website. There's been a number of drafts of it out, and I think they just approved. I believe the the uh, planning committee just approved the, the draft. The okay. Right before town meeting. Um, yeah, it's on the website. It's on the website. Okay, so if people uh, could take a look at the website on that, and Alan, if you could. Like I said, coordinate with Gory and, and get her in. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, any budgets? Finance committee. Okay, Finance Committee. Got to start somewhere. Page uh, twenty one. <coughs> okay, Peter. I'm sorry, are we looking at the base or the total? Well, I'm talking about page 22 now, top line. 6398. It should be 
reason it's confused is because uh, uh, the, uh, it doesn't account for a step increase in January, which is, by the way, the final step increase because uh, Gloria's been here now for eight years, I guess, or will, will have been. And uh, so this corrects, so I'd like to correct the, the numbers on page 21. Okay, so it should be 6811? Yes. And that's because she had a step this pa in this past year. Yeah. Uh, which this is last month. But th isn't that included in the 15? Two, six two seven four. No. Okay, it needed to have been though. It's not the right step. The, I think we probably got the budget wrong last year, not accounting for the video correction. So I'll have to check that with um, Karen uh, next <coughs> time. You can double check, but I talked to them. Yeah, but but I'll make sure that we account for it. Thanks. Salary and wages should be 9861 instead of 9439. Okay, I'm sorry. So this salary and wages is? 9861. Bottom line? Okay, six. So are you saying this is correcting a prior mistake? Yeah, probably. And then shouldn't the base also be 6811, not just the total? Yeah. These numbers are, are difficult mm -hmm. uh, because it makes it's easy to deal with if, if the uh, anniversary date is start in July but if, when it's January then it's then you, you've got you know you have okay. to take the average that two right the average plus there's a 20 percent involved okay so I'll ask her what that what that base number should be okay because Peter usually a step is someplace in the four to five percent this is a nine percent Okay. The actual last year should have been six three eight seven. <coughs> okay. Okay, so your recommendation is for twelve thousand three fifty one. Sixty one. Sixty one. Twelve three six one. <coughs> and the uh, salaries and wages is nine eight six one. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the uh, bottom line finance committee total of 12361, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any other budgets? I was afraid you'd say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, review the warrant. Any budgets? Any
Now, how many, how many people have budgets for next week? Library. You'll have library. Okay, great. We will. Yeah, we will. Okay, okay, you'll have a bunch. Anybody else? Okay, uh, a couple of things. Since the uh, 16th is a holiday and we usually don't meet anyway, and we're probably going to get a huge storm uh, coming in. Uh, and I don't think we have enough to take up an evening. I'm canceling. There's no meeting Monday night. No meeting Monday night. Gloria, let anybody you know. And then on the uh, 18th, we have the uh, Tourism Committee. We'll try to deal with all the committees and commissions to the extent we can. We'll do the library budget. We'll do the budgets uh, that Peter and Dave have. And if you have any other budgets, even small ones, but just, you know, move to, to uh, get them done. Uh, okay, is there any other, uh, any other business before the committee? Paul? Uh, just one quick notice. I looked up in the town report for the Human Rights Commission. The 2013 town report said that the commission received one formal complaint in 2013 and a number of calls from concerned citizens that did not result in formal complaints. Okay, remember that for <laughs> uh, okay, any other any other business? Okay, meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.